Hello, and thank you for joining this MD Magazine peer exchange entitled Cardioprotective Treatment Options for Diabetes. Today we will be talking about cardiovascular risk in diabetes and how to optimize treatment approaches and pharmacotherapy to help prevent complications in our patients. I'm Dr. Keith C. Ferdinand, Professor of Medicine and the Gerald S. Berrison Chair in Preventive Cardiology at the Tulane University School of Medicine in New Orleans, Louisiana. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Seth Baum, immediate past president of the American Society for Preventive Cardiology and professor of medicine at the Charles Smith School of Medicine in Boca Raton, Florida. Dr. Chris Cannon, senior physician at the Brigham and Women's Hospital and professor of medicine at the Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. Melissa McGuire, master's prepared RN and certified diabetes educator and practice manager for the Hervati Cardiometabolic Center of Excellence at the St. Luke's Health System in Miriam, Kansas. And Dr. Peter McCullough, professor of medicine and vice chief of internal medicine at Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. All right, so first let's talk about the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes and its relationship to cardiovascular disease. Peter, you want to lead that? Well, sure. I think it's a good way to start to understand that type 2 diabetes is a pervasive problem today in Western societies. And its pathogenesis relies on the presence of excess adiposity and genetic predisposition as a general rule. And type 2 diabetes has been consistently shown to be a cardiovascular risk factor for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And more recently in epidemiologic studies, it's been identified to be an independent risk factor of heart failure. In fact, all forms of heart failure both those with reduced and preserved ejection fraction. You know, I'm glad you mentioned heart failure because we often say cardiovascular disease and people are thinking just heart attacks and strokes, but heart failure may be even more common as a cause of death, morbidity, and mortality related to the heart in patients with diabetes. Yeah, it's true. Heart failure is the leading non-traumatic cause of hospitalization in the United States today. Now, one thing I noted, and anyone can chime in, he didn't use the term diabetes is a cardiovascular risk equivalent. We saw that in some of the older guidelines, but you didn't make it a risk equivalent. Why not? Anyone? Someone used to say diabetes equals heart disease. Chris? Well, certainly in initial studies looking at people who had had an MI and those with diabetes, their, their risk of long-term mortality seemed to be similar, although we've seen thankfully and potentially from some of the advances in prevention that if you've not had a heart attack but have diabetes, you're certainly at higher risk, uh, but not quite as high as if you've had a heart attack or stroke. So sort of good news and bad news that it is a pervasive risk, and, and the heart failure risk, as you pointed out, is, is just a huge epidemic of both heart failure and diabetes. And certainly, I think, uh, Seth? Yeah, I was going to say, so I think we've also learned from calcium scoring that there is a, a, a not insignificant minority of diabetic patients who have zero calcium scores. Um, and our, our most recent cholesterol guidelines reflect the distinction of the, the diabetes as a cardiovascular risk equivalent uh, that we used to say, and now we're saying, uh, no, actually we look at diabetic or patients with diabetes and say, uh, what, is the, what, what is their risk? If their risk is high enough, then we treat them in that risk equivalent uh, position. If not, then we treat them a little less aggressively. Now, I don't want to get too detailed on coronary calcium scoring, but let's say if your coronary calcium score is in the single digits, three, four, five, is that the same as zero? Not at all. So, so uh, zero, zero is the only zero. Uh, you got to have zero to, to, to be at that, in that low risk category. One to 100, you're, you're and one and beyond, and you're in a higher risk than, than the average patient. 100 and, and above, you're in a, a very, very high risk, and there are those people who think that that's a, a reasonable enough cut, cut point. point. 
And then there are others who think, well, we should go for a, a much higher cut point, like three or 400, depending on who you speak So, with. Melissa, you're seeing a lot of patients with diabetes. You don't tell them all that they have heart disease? It's not a risk equivalent in everyone? Actually, we, we really do spend a lot of time talking about that and, and the fact that they are at higher risk. Um, and it's something that we start from the very onset to get them to thinking about the two diseases or the two disease states at the same time. Um, and, and really putting it all in one bucket uh, um, because they are facing that. So it is something we talk to a, a lot.